So good evening, everyone. My name is Angela Vollmer, and I'm the marketing coordinator here at Justine Blaney Wellness Center. And I wanted to introduce you and welcome you to our Healthy Feet and Healthy Body. So tonight we're going to um, be taking some questions and you're welcome to type in the questions. Um, they will come directly to myself and I will make sure that Dr. Justine has them. If you want to text her directly, her number is on the screen, 647-987. 9355 and we'll have an opportunity near the end of the presentation for Dr. Justine to address all of the questions that you guys might have. So I wanted to take a moment and introduce you to Dr. Justine. So she is that incredible lady that started at a young age and was very passionate um, both for personal reasons and professional reasons um, to go into chiropractic. Um, you know she had um, her brother and um, and that really drove her career path. But she also was an advocate um, and has been very, very um, in the limelight, I guess, if that makes sense, um, for many years, um, talking um, about sports and equality. And this is such a, a very passionate um, area that she has. She is an amazing chiropractor. She's an incredible mom, incredible um, wife. And you know what? She loves to speak. She loves to be able to share health and wellness with everybody and anybody because she really feels that it makes a difference in everybody's life and everybody deserves it. So please help me welcome Dr. Justine Blaney. All right. Thank you, Angela. All right. As we get into stuff, uh, try to make it brighter with the feedback from Preston. So thank you. And I do welcome feedback uh, if I can make anything better or if you have topics you would love to hear from. We're already uh, set in our September, October schedule, um, but I'd love for you to hear more and learn more. So we do have Zumba with Linda, a friend of Catherine, uh, who is sharing uh, 15, 20 minutes of, for you to learn a little bit about Zumba. We are starting another yoga classes virtually at the office uh, that you can sign up for and also sit and fit yoga. So sitting yoga, we are starting at the office. So please call the office at 905-840-9355 if you want to sign up for those virtual yoga classes or virtual sitting yoga classes. But these ones you see on this list of the webinars, they're free. Share them with others. We have the sit and fit. This is a video I made for my mom for Mother's Day. And I just thought, I got to share this. There's other people who have sore hips, sore knees, sore feet, um, and they want to stay fit. And we have a, a low impact way of doing exercise to their own music. And um, we have balance exercises with my daughter, Hannah. Now, these are a little more difficult. Starts off easy, gets a little more challenging near the end. So great for your kids to try this to improve their balance and great for athletes. My daughter is a, has been an international figure skater, but is now a university uh, figure skater for U of T. Um, so there are some more challenging moves near the end. Um, the summer workout, I'm going to be doing that with Hannah. That's coming up. I haven't made it yet. And But the strong abs. Now, if you want to you know, deal with the COVID-10 extra pounds or build a stronger core, that is one for you. We're going to go over over 30 different ab exercises, stomach exercises in about 16 minutes so that you can find different ones for you. Get a variety. Try it all if you can. Um, but it'll give you lots of variety. So that's what's coming up. And there's more coming up in August with Tai Chi, more on heavy metal detoxes, learning about essential oils, um, talking with our nutritionist. So I am excited. Share this great information with your friends and family. Everything we're trying to give here is free. We always offer complimentary uh, consultation. So you're welcome to do that with one of the doctors as well. So today, we're talking about healthy feet and how healthy feet affect the rest of your body. Basically, your feet is, you know, where you meet with the ground. So, so crucial if you want to get anywhere. So when we look at the foot, it's so amazing. Over 26 bones in your feet, 58 joints, over 100 ligaments, almost 20 uh, intrinsic muscles. So when you think about it, over 30 muscles just in your foot in order to hold your weight, whether it's 100 pounds, 200 pounds, 300 pounds, all those bones, muscles, and ligaments, they got to work hard. And if they're not working, what you know is if your feet hurt, 
basically everything hurts. You don't want to go anywhere, which leads to all sorts of other health challenges through the knees, hips, back, but then also heart conditions because you're not wanting to exercise or move as well. So taking care of your foundation, your feet is absolutely crucial for other parts of your health. Um, so when you look about how important taking care of your feet, now that people have uh, Fitbits and able to check out their steps, many people are taking 10, 15,000 steps, um, literally, you know, so many kilometers or miles every single day. Um, and each step is about 3.5 times your body weight going through your foot. So that is, if you're just a lightweight, 130 pounds, um, that's over 500 pounds of pressure going into your foot. So to me, that's a huge reason to take care of your feet, your muscles in your feet, your joints in your feet, and your calves. So today we're going to talk about different kinds of arches. If you have high arch, low arch, overpronation, or supination, 95% of the population rolls in that's over pronation and flat feet is when this pest planus. So your foot absorbs the shock when you're walking or running or moving. And majority of people, as they age, their feet start to roll in, roll in, roll in more. So as people age, they tend to find more and more conditions um, and challenges with their feet that we're going to cover today. So there are three main arches. Most people think of the arch just on the inside of the foot. They don't realize there's an arch on the outside of the foot or across the top of the foot. So if you look there, you will see uh, and on the position, the, the first picture on your left, you'll see three arches, one on the inside, outside of the foot, and across the top of your foot. And I always recognize the top of my foot because that's where you would feel pain under the ball of your foot versus pain under the middle of your foot or pain in your heel. And we're going to cover the different conditions coming up for those different sort of pain zones. All right. So if you look at the top arch, you will see that the, you can almost put your fingers. We think about that in hockey, whether you have too much of an arch um, for your hockey stick being an illegal curve. Well, same thing with the arch of your foot. You should be able to fit three to four fingers under the arch of your foot when standing and when sitting to have a proper arch of the foot. So if you look at the bottom foot, you can see that collapsed arch. Now, many people think they have a normal arch because they're looking at their foot non-weight bearing, meaning sitting and not looking at once they stand and how that foot and that arch might collapse. Or they're only looking at the one arch, the one on the inside of the foot, not on the outside of the foot or across the top of the foot. So some of the reasons why you might be an overpronator, uh, and you can have this tested with a chiropractor, you can have this tested with a physiotherapist. Now there's some great advice even at the running room and how to pick the right shoe if you're an overpronator or oversupinator. But some of the, the things that you can know if you're an overpronator where the foot rolls in is if you're foot flare, you're, you you walk with your feet pointing out more than the typical five degrees. Five degrees would to 10 degrees might be normal, um, but not more. Um, wear on the back part of your shoe, heel wear, your kneecaps, patella approximation, your kneecaps turn inward. You start to tend to have more knee pain over time. Your Achilles tendon, that's the, the arch at the back. When you look at the back of your heels, it bows inward. Um, flat arches, that's navicular is one of the bones in your foot. The metatarsals is the top of your foot just right before your toes. Um, they tend to drop and you might end up with hammer toes, meaning that toes that kind of stick up. Um, weak muscles into the buttocks, hip flexors are the front of your legs, your quads. So yes, the muscles from your feet and challenges with your feet affect all all the way up the kinetic chain to your calf, your leg, and even into your back and hips. So if you look here, you'll see the overpronation. In the top left-hand corner, you'll see that bowing of the Achilles tendon. If you look at the foot where you see the feet facing forward, you will see the um, flat metatarsals. That's the flat across the top arch. 
And when you look at the bottom part, you'll see that kind of bulge in the foot on the inside of the arch. That's an indication of overpronation and pest planus. You also see the toes starting to kind of buckle up. And when the toes start to buckle up, that's the signs of a hammer toe, meaning that you have dropped metatarsals or dropped arch across the top of your foot. So right here, you'll start to see that Achilles tendon bowing. So when you look at somebody from the back, um, particularly without shoes, without arch support, you see the, the bulging of the foot on the inside of the arch, and you see the light sort of concave curve facing outward in the back of their heels. If this persists, it starts to lead to improper wear of your shoes, but more importantly, improper wear of the ligaments, muscles, and tendons in your foot, which affects the muscles, ligaments into your knee, calf, and all the way up. So um, the foot is designed to lock and lock in order for us to walk. So when um, the foot is or pronates, it turns in as it hits the ground. That's so that we can absorb that shock of whatever we're walking on. So it has to pronate as well as supinate as well as we start to lift our foot into the next step. So pronation and supination are normal. The challenge is if we have excessive turning in of the foot or excessive turning out of the foot as we have a uh, gait, which is the way you walk. So as I said before, 95% of people overpronate, which means the foot turns in. And that's when a lot of energy and force is lost. So you can't get the same power. And that's why top athletes, particularly you see this in golfers, they put custom-made orthotics into their golf shoes because they know that that can transmit to power in their golf swing. Well, this is same for runners, same for soccer players, uh, baseball players, skaters. So to have a customized insert is now part of the athletic world because we know that you can get more power, you can get um, greater balance uh, for your sport if you are able to support the arch better. Very few people are over supinators. That means a very, very high arch and poor shock absorption. So you end up with still challenges into the knees, but it's just less common. And that's when you start to see more bowing of the knees and the knees tend to be further apart. Now, just to make sure you're aware that bowing of your knees can be somewhat normal in young, like two-year-olds and up. So I don't want you to look at your two-year-old and go, oh my gosh, they have over supination. Um, with the diaper, you do see children tend to, many children tend to have sort of a bowing look of, of their, their legs until they start to grow out of it. But it is something you want to monitor with your doctor and your chiropractor or your osteopath or your physiotherapist. Now, a lot of that force lands on your big toe. So, so important to take care of your feet because a lot of that weight into your big toe leads to bunions um, and leads to more arthritis of that big toe. How you know if there's wear and tear is you'll see calluses on the bottom of the foot. So like right where I would have my ring, I might have a rougher part of skin where I have my uh, ring that my, my family crest that says I, um, integrity is our best virtue or by my wedding ring just underneath. Same thing happens with your feet. You'll end up with calluses where there's wear and tear or where that arch is lost across the top of the foot. You have that metatarsal drop. Um, I also have calluses where you have bunions or neuromas or corns. And it typically those calluses let us know of where the challenge areas are. Now we're going to go through some pictures that when you have a flat foot or a supinated foot, how it affects the gait all the way up and the, and the joints all the way up. So this is an example of over pronation. If you look at the picture on your right, you will see that the foot rolls in. So the arch collapses, the leg twists and rolls in, which makes the kneecap roll in. Then it points, the pelvis starts to tilt forward and increases the curve in your lower back. So if you look at the picture on your left hand side at the top, you'll see how the posture is radically affected by a flat foot. And then that can correspond into your x-rays. And it may even correspond to back pain, mid-back pain, neck pain, and even headaches and migraines. So this is why very, very important if positions or conditions are not resolving to make sure you have your foot checked. 
So plantar fascia is so common. My brother's challenged with this. My husband's been challenged with this. And this is like the saran wrap on the bottom of your foot. So when the weight transfers through that foot, that uh, deformation of that ligament basically or fascia on the bottom of your foot tightens right up. And it can almost feel when you feel the bottom of your foot like guitar string, so, so tight along the bottom of your foot. Some of the things that can help with plantar fascia is definitely custom-made orthotics because even if you do physiotherapy, chiropractic, massage therapy, if you walk on flip-flops, walk on uh, shoes without support, the problem is just continuously come back. So some of the things, soft tissue therapy, trigger point therapy, interferential current, shock therapy, uh, can, ultrasound can be helpful for plantar fasciitis. There are specific plantar fasciitis braces on the foot to push the foot back that we recommend, um, as well as custom-made orthotics. And this is plantar fasciitis is typically the pain you feel first thing in the morning, like you can barely walk to get out of bed to go to the bathroom. That's when you want to stretch your foot right away. So we have specific foot exercises. I've already done a video on foot, knees, and hip. I've done an exercise video on foot. So check my website, check the COVID landing page to get those specific exercises for your feet because they will help you with plantar fasciitis. Morton's aroma, a little less common, looks like a gumball, typically between the second and third uh, toes or third and fourth toes. This is when the nerves all gum up. They all get like knotted up. And it is not something that you can get rid of with therapy. You can help your body cope better with it. So typically what you need is a custom made orthotic with what's called a Morton's aroma pad. And that lifts that transverse arch, the arch across the top of the foot, where the gumball is, where the maroma is, it literally lifts it up so that there isn't pressure on it, reducing the inflammation in that area. They try not to do surgeries on this kind of thing because uh, you might affect all act, um, ability for that foot to move because it is a nerve, group of nerves or knotted nerves. And if those nerves are, have surgery on them, they may not work afterwards. So it's very rarely uh, are there surgeries done. The goal is typically conservative care, try to get the inflammation down, pressure off of the neuroma. Bunions are super common and can be very, very painful in red. And typically, like you'll see the picture here, the big toe starts to point towards your little toe. And those muscles really, really pull on that big toe and you'll start to see a bump on the inside of your big toe and that's where all of your weight lands so very important to get the weight better distributed with orthotics get off of high heels um off of shoes that would put that that are tight around the toe box so very important to have wider shoe wear um in order to prevent this and make sure that you do the exercises for that big toe or it becomes more and more arthritic or even fuses. Bunion surgery, they can cut that bone, but often it still leads to problems afterwards and even problems that can come back if you don't address the original cause of the bunion because the bone can still grow. So very important to get rid of the original cause by taking care of strengthening your arches in your foot, getting customized orthotics, and making sure you're strengthening your calves and, and as well as stretching your calves. Now, when you have problems of the foot, that can cause internal rotation of the calf, knee, and um, hips. So that's why it's very, very important to have your hips and your hip flexors checked to prevent early degeneration, early arthritis. Yes, the you know medical system is very good at hip replacements, knee replacements, but the goal is that that doesn't happen in the first place. All right. So when you look at the knee, typically it's very common that people get wear and tear of the knees. I, I think of my own mom just had a knee uh, replacement done, knee surgery done, or people have knee scopes done. So the pressure, if your weight is not going equally through your foot, it will not go equally through your knee and lead to more arthritis in the knee or patella femoral syndrome, which means that the kneecap isn't tracking properly.
So some of the symptoms of the knee, when you know you see these things, grinding, crunching, locking, popping, these can indicate concerns of your ligaments in your knee, the meniscus in your knee, and your foot mechanics always needs to be addressed first. Uh, you can start to see swelling, instability, um, or like the knee is giving way. Again, you want to look if there's been a trauma to cause the knee or if there's been repetitive wear and tear, and that can start with improper foot mechanics. So how do you know if you uh, have concerns with your knee, which means your feet need to be checked? You have difficulty walking, uh, swelling around the knee, pain with the knee, uh, anytime, but especially if it's at night and it persists, um, locking or cracking, twisting, swelling, or any unusual symptoms of, or of and around the knee, including things like numbness or tingling, because if there's challenges from your lower back, that can cause numbness and tingling. Or after I injured my knee, for example, uh, wearing a Don Joy brace, if the brace is too tight, that can put pressure on the fibular ligament, uh, sorry, nerve, and that can cause numbness and tingling around the knee as well. So definitely having your knee assessed, and every time you have a knee concern, having your hip, back, and feet assessed is important. Some of the treatments uh, for your knee, physiotherapists are excellent, chiropractors are excellent, massage therapists are excellent, acupuncturists are excellent. So there's many, many different options for knee concerns. But with all of them, you should be getting your own exercise program. So that's why I put on uh, my uh, YouTube channel as well as on my website on the COVID landing page that there are uh, exercises for your knees uh, available for you free there. Now the hip coming all the way at the top. I mean, you hear of tons of people with arthritis a hip. Why one hip more than the other? And typically that's because one foot rolls in or is over pronates more than the other and it wasn't addressed early. That's why everybody should have their feet checked. Just like you get your teeth checked, your eyes checked, you should have your feet checked so that you can make sure you're aware if you need different types of shoe wear uh, or protection for your feet to prevent future problems. So some of the symptoms, obviously, I think limping's obvious, but aching, numbs and tingling, uh, pain into the buttocks or groin or pain down the leg, such as sciatica, can be challenges to being with your hip that, again, can still start from your feet. Some of the areas, uh, one hip doesn't stretch the same. You have more range of motion in one hip compared to the other. Uh, for me, I am aware because I'll get more groin pulls and more hamstring pulls or uh, uh, pulled hamstrings on my right leg compared to my left. And it's also my right foot that will roll in more than my left. And I'm also more dominant with that foot. Um, with the hip, always being aware of osteoporosis, which is weakness of the bones or lack of bone osteopenia, because that would obviously be at more risk and you want to strengthen your lower body in order to prevent a hip fracture. Some of the causes of the hip pain uh, beyond taking care of your feet, certainly you can have arthritis in the hip, but if there's arthritis one side more than another, then you want to look at why and is if there a hip imbalance, like your hips are, are not even or leg lengths are not even. You can get bursitis, and there's a difference between bursitis, tendonitis, and arthritis. With arthritis, you want to do more stretching, more movement, more exercises. But with tendonitis and bursitis, you want to do ice and you need to do some rest at the beginning as well and use typically physiotherapy things like current, IFC, ultrasound in order to reduce that inflammation as long as well as things like natural anti-inflammatories, turmeric, curcumin, devil's claw, reduce that inflammation. Osteonecrosis, a lot less common. Um, and that's when there's an area of the uh, bone which is not getting proper blood supply and is basically kind of rotting in there. So you do not want to have that and that can be checked on x-ray. The lower back can radiate uh, through uh, because of the nerves and also because of the muscles in the lower back as well as the disc can radiate down your leg. So children too can end up with hip concerns. Um, so we do do infant checkups um, and children checking for hip dysplasia, like cavity perthes and uneven legs. 
as I said, everybody should have their feet checked. Uh, typically, though, for orthotics, uh, yes, I can make orthotics for eight-year-olds. I try to wait until uh, sort of 10 or more. With my own children, I waited until they were 12 before making orthotics. So there is a sort of a, a sweet zone because you want the muscles to develop. Um, and, and better to get exercises like walking on pillows, walking on uneven surfaces, some of the toe grabs, um, sand exercises for the children before they start to wear customized orthotics. Um, and then you want to make sure they just have, if you've noticed a flat foot, concerns where the knees turn in, make sure that you have better shoe wear uh, where the shoe on the inside of the arch is much more stiff. Uh, when do you need to see one? When you have trouble with walking, night, uh, especially if you have night pain, swelling. Um, if you have hip pain, knee pain, foot pain, I highly recommend that you see the chiropractor or physiotherapist, osteopath, to make sure you find the cause of the problem. Some of the treatments available for foot conditions as well as knee hip conditions. Chiropractors work with the whole spine, toes to nose, as we say. You want customized orthotics. We use a couple different companies based on uh, the patient's needs. The one for Germany, I love orthogenics because we can do 3D analysis of your foot as well as of your shoe to make sure the actual orthotic fits the shoe. Um, with other companies, often you can get a great orthotic, but it may not work well in your shoes and you need new shoes. So we, that's why we use uh, the two different companies. Acupuncture can help reduce the inflammation, reduce the muscle tension. Massage therapy reduces the muscle tension. Um, for some, uh, if they've tried shock with therapy, physiotherapy, continue to have plantar fasciitis, continue to have um, uh, inflammation, continue to have bursitis, stem cell or PRT are injections that you can do with your medical system, medical team, in order to try and get proper, healthier blood and healing blood into the damaged tissues. So what does an orthotic do? It's an insert that you put on the bottom of your foot, customized to your arch and your weight. You know, there's many, many different kinds for different types of shoe wear. Uh, you can get one, like my kids have them for their skates. You can get them for the, your running shoes, your casual shoes, your business shoes. Yes, even your heels. Um, dancing shoes, soccer cleats, baseball cleats, golf shoes. So you want to make sure that you, uh, typically in our office, we ask you to bring two pairs of your favorite shoes. Try to get the orthotic that will work in those two shoes um, and for you to be able to easily wear it. Uh, can it correct uh, conditions of the foot, knee, and hip? Yes, it can. It can not only help correct conditions of, of the knee, hip, uh, foot, but it also can help prevent future conditions. So it's very important to see if you do need uh, uh, custom inserts or even over-the-counter inserts um, in order to prevent uh, challenges. And that's why we recommend that everybody at least gets their feet checked once a year. So Orthogenics, this is the company we use. You'll see the computerized technology looking at um, uh, your where the areas of shock absorption and it does precision digital modeling so it uses the machine to measure your foot measure your arch when you're weight bearing when you're not weight bearing and how to customize that orthotic to your custom or your sorry your favorite shoe wear this is something from Jim Rohn. I believe it's so, so important all times. Take care of your body. It's the only place you have to live. Literally, our health is our number one priority. If anything that we're learning at these times right now, these challenging times, is that your health is everything. Take care of it. Work on prevention. Help your immune system naturally to prevent sickness, not just COVID, but any sickness. Take care of your body mind, body, and spirit to work on prevention of, of any conditions and help you have the more energy in order to help your family, your community, your your um, faith, and your, your volunteerism to, to make a difference. 
So you'll look at how your if your foot does roll in, you'll see how it affects your knees, hips, and then you'll also see you'll see how the compensation up into the spine. This is one of the reasons why chiropractors like to look at your posture to see if there's a condition there. Uh, Thomas Edison, the doctor of the future, will give no medicine but interest the patients, his patients in the care of the human frame, diet, and cause and prevention of disease. So human frame, that means looking at your posture, looking at your feet and all the way up, all about working on prevention rather than reaction. So being proactive rather than reactive for health conditions. So as chiropractors, what we want to do is look and find those areas of subluxation. So if you look at the top at 100%, that's when you're feeling amazing, top of the world. And that's what we want for everybody. But if we have different stresses, chemical, physical, emotional, spiritual stresses, EMS, electromagnetic frequency, you know, with all this fear of 5G, if you have those stressors um, and the physical can be with your feet, that can lead to subluxations of one of those 26 bones in your feet, leading to challenges in your feet, which affect your ankle, knee, hip, all the way to your spine. And if you have more dysfunction all the way happening to the spine, you have more dis-ease in the body, more stress on the nervous system body, which leads to more symptoms and ultimately leads to lower quality and quantity of life. So we have different ankle exercises, drawing the alphabet with your foot in big um, capital letters, doing toe um, calf raises, using TheraBand. That's why on our website, we have numerous uh, wellness talks there. There's an ankle, knee, foot talk that's 15 minutes. There's a four or five minute one just for your feet, another one just for your knees, and another one just for your hips. Um, there's different exercises. You see the calf raises here. If you go to the next one, the heel raises, you'll look at toe walking to strengthen your foot. Doing here, you'll see uh, bringing your foot toes towards your body using a TheraBand to strengthen the front of your calf. And um, crunching your foot. You can use this with a towel. Um, you can do this with sand to strengthen the bottom muscles of the foot. And lastly, tennis ball rolls to massage the bottom of the foot or using, if you have plantar fasciitis at the end of the day, an ice water bottle, a 500 ml water bottle so that your foot's going over the ball, lacrosse ball, uh, baseball or water bottle to massage the muscles of the foot. There are different videos. I love the videos from Dr. Jen Fit. So look her up on Instagram. She has many videos on how to massage your foot, how to do foot exercises. Uh, and she has ones for opening up your back and stretching your calf, stretching the glutes. Um, so just if you're an Instagram person, look at her videos. They have some great videos on how to help yourself. So you'll see she does a, a video here on pronation supination to look up and all the muscles in the foot and has strengthening that inner arch of your foot. Um, looking at hip exercises, you'll see how to do hip opening exercises. Many of these are yoga poses. You'll see the happy baby, um, the cow face um, legs. You'll see the um, hip openers and the baby or child's pose. Highly recommend getting some of these poses to open up your hips, your calves, your feet. And that's why we have the virtual yoga going on. Again, sign up for that at the office. It's with Aisha virtually on Zoom and just very small groups so that she can be correcting your poses and correcting you um, uh, via virtually. She's also setting up for those who can't get on the ground chair yoga, sitting yoga, highly recommended to improve your flexibility. There are different knee exercises, using balls, using bands, using your own body weight, stretching your hamstrings, stretching your quads. I highly recommend, again, looking up those specific exercises. But if you need help, we do have kinesiologists at the office that would be happy to go through specific exercises with you. 
Different balance exercises are key for the foot and for your knees and hips. So you'll see at the very bottom, the very beginning steps, standing, just standing on one foot, learning to stand on a wobble cushion or a wobble um, uh, uh, cushion. You'll see the blue one. That's a balance cushion. So we do have the balance exercises coming up with Hannah, um, and they're just done outside on our deck. So I encourage you, everybody, to improve their balance, especially young athletes. So check out that next talk coming up with Hannah soon to improve your balance. All right, if you have any questions, again, don't hesitate to text me. If you have questions at the office or need a time appointment, don't hesitate to ask the front desk so we can uh, set up that specific time for you, especially with the social distancing. We do need to know that in advance so that we can make sure you feel confident and comfortable with uh, being properly taken care of and all of your questions and answers are addressed. Um, if not, don't hesitate to text and we'd be happy to address those questions. So at this time, uh, if there are no questions, I just want to remind you of our upcoming talks again. Um, we do have the Zumba with Linda coming up, the sit and fit. Uh, that's for everybody, all your grandma and grandpas. Share it with everybody, those with knee and hip conditions, please, or sore feet. This is good for you. Like I said, I promoted the balance exercises with Hannah. Uh, that's coming up end of the month. I think you'll love it for your kids and for those athletes. Uh, so please join us for all of our wellness talks coming up. Well, as usual, share these webinars with friends and family. We're trying to give back to help you uh, with free information um, so you can be the healthiest possible. And, and just to know that we are open, we are there to help you. But if you're not comfortable, we do do the virtual appointments uh, free at this time. Um, and we're always looking for our reviews or comments on how we can make things better, like Preston letting me know to turn on more lights, right? So let us know how if there's topics that you'd like us to cover. We'd love to do that for you and help uh, you get better information so you can be healthier for you or a friend. So definitely please do a review, Facebook, Google, um, uh, you know, anything that works for you, um, Yelp. Uh, much appreciated. And otherwise, have a fabulous night. Get out for those walks. Get out maybe early in the morning when it's not so hot. But get out, get moving, take care of your feet because they take care of your feet, they take care of you, and they take care of getting you moving.